Hi, watercolor class. So on the final fraud project, I'd like to look at a, a potential of maybe doing a painting involving perspective, a deeper kind of perspective. You know, if you're trying to put together a very complex space, you know, a landscape, um, something to that effect. So I just wanted to go over uh, some pers perspective strategies with you guys so that um, uh, you can, you know, should you choose to do this, you can consider how you might st uh, strategize, set up your uh, painting and achieve the best circumstances for getting a kind of an accurate um, type of representation. If you're, if you're looking for, you know, realism um, in, in the process. So uh, what I have here is a, a landscape that, that I'm interested in painting myself, just a walk down a street in my neighborhood. And uh, I'm noticing that there is primarily one point perspective because everything seems to be going to all, all the receding parallel lines in space, like this row of trees, the telephone lines, um, the street, they seem to all be going towards one vanishing point. So, so you would describe this picture as having a one point perspective. And so uh, just to analyze it, I have, you know, I have a ruler and I have a marking pen and I'm just gonna look it over and, and try to really think. This, this would play into my, uh, the way I set up the drawing too. When I actually go to paint it, I would, I, I would make a sketch that incorporated the, the vanishing point and the one point perspective, all of that. But I'm, I'm gonna underscore that just by analyzing this picture. So I'm taking, and this works, this, this system only works um, with, if you're working with parallel lines, with architecture, obviously, it's generally set up on a grid. Um, you know, streets uh, streets are the same width <laughs> as they go down, as 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 they you know are engineered. Um, these trees we're assuming were planted at the same distance from the curb, and so on. You know, uh, certain things we can take for granted, so we can test out our system. Anyway, I'm imagining the vanishing point is right about here because uh, that's, you know, that's kind of where I am, you know, I'm, I'm imagining myself kind of standing in the street about a quarter of a mile away, which seems to be where everything uh, is leading. And, that, and yeah, that's like about six feet above the street, a quarter of a mile away, just above the street here. So I'm just gonna um, follow these parallel lines. This is the most dominant one where the leaves the leaves are kind of, you know, uh, there's a line of leaves along the curb there. So um, I'm going to draw it to this vanishing point. And then uh, there's a telephone uh, wire uh, that we can presume is, is you know, uh, also somewhat accurate in that respect. I'm going to follow that telephone line. It's not going to be perfect. But I can make it perfect, and you can see it's it's above eye level and it's going away from me in space, and so I'm going to make that kind of disappear towards that vanishing point. And then here's the side of the road here, you know, or you know, there's kind of this gravelly you know section here, but roughly there's a kind of a a curb line if there were a curb. And that appears to be going towards the vanishing point. Obviously, it's not going to be absolutely perfect. If you were doing a mechanical rendering, you would make it that way. And then I'm um, following, taking these trees, the base of these trees here. And, you know, that's going to be that's regular, but not absolutely, absolutely perfect. And that appears to line up nicely with the vanishing point. So everything seems to be lining up. Um, there's another telephone wire up here, uh, whether or not that's visible on screen, I don't know, but it's kind of bowing. So it's kind of sagging and then it's bowing up. 
There are some telephone poles. They seem to be somewhat irregular, but they are they are roughly kind of going down like that. I don't have one here in the immediate foreground, but I'll just kind of I'll make them conform somewhat to this system. So if there were a, a telephone pole visible in the foreground, you know, it would be the top of it, or actually it's, it's like a few feet down on each pole. That seems to be going towards the vanishing point. So there would be a telephone pole out here. If there were, you know, the top would be about here and then a few feet down. So let's see, that's the only thing I can really tell that the trees aren't, uh, they're so, they're so, you know, um, they, they kind of, they're obscured in the foreground. I can't really tell the more distant trees what they're doing. Um, and there are kind of different types of trees here. So I can't really use those, but generally speaking, they're bigger and they're getting smaller. The only other thing I can do, there's a kind of a flat plane here this would represent, this actually would represent the um, horizon line, this line here. And so the horizon line is uh, equidistant, I mean, it's equivalent to the vanishing point. Here's the vanishing point. So this is gonna be my horizon line, which, which represents eye level. So I can, can draw that. And then I, I don't really see uh, many more um, clues or indicators, but uh, so far, you know, uh, it only, you know, the system can only be ascertained if, if you have, if you have things that are definably kind of parallel edges to one another. So the base of these trees are parallel to the street. We know the streets about the same, you know, width all the way down. Um, so that that all kind of sets up. Clouds even sometimes can be used in that way. If the wind is blowing them, uh, you'll see these kind of patterns of clouds, and so they'll they'll also above above the eye level they will um, they will converge towards some vanishing point on the horizon as well. It's kind of amazing in that way. Um, but uh, anyway, with this urban architecture, you can usually ascertain uh, some pretty distinct lines. Now this makes sense to be my eye level because if you look at this level ground here, this is a park over here. Yeah, I would be my eye level would be a little bit above the ground. Here's an incline right here. This comes down. So the street is actually lower than this little plane on the park. And so that makes that that makes sense. Like way over here, here's the kind of level playing field. And I would, you know, at this distance I would be just standing um, above ground a little bit. And that, that all makes visual sense. This is the eye level. This is called vanishing point. I'm sorry, vanishing point. <laughs> this is called the vanishing point. And then this is, uh, and then this is the horizon line. Just that level line. Across the picture plane. And then when I so I set up my um, painting, then uh, I think typically we we want to put the horizon line too high. Uh, it it uh, often it's going to be more, I guess, believable if you have it kind of lower down. Um, we tend, you know, we tend not to instinctively not do those things and um, it could it's helpful if you kind of have a lower horizon line if you're trying to show a more convincing um, vanishing point perspective as if you know you're the viewer on the street at at uh, you know standing on the ground and you're kind of got your easel set up and you're painting then uh, yeah generally the horizon line is uh, lower um, uh, let's see one more parallel line here. There's this is ba basically like a parking strip, and these are yards that begin. So it kind of runs roughly like that. I can set that up too. So 
in my sketch that I do for the painting, you know, I would just be conscious of these things. And I, the first thing I would do is kind of lo locate my uh, vanishing point right there. And then, um, and then the horizon line, and then make all of these forms kind of these parallel lines receding in space appear to converge on that one point. Now, um, We'll do the same thing with two point perspective perspective. Here's a cabin, very simple architecture. Uh, this time, the uh, vanishing points, because it's two point perspective, are going to be out here somewhere. So uh, I'm just going to start drawing. Now, uh, I want to locate these parallel lines on the cabin. So obviously, the eaves of the cabin, this, you know, this is like this is a plane, a surface plane that's moving away from me in space. So the eaves of the roof line and the base of the house would be uh, lines to use. So I'm just gonna set my ruler up there. Okay, follow that. And then I follow this line. So they're intersecting right there. Now, um, the, this plane and this plane, and we know this is at right angles, that's just how it's done. Um, but this plane is, a, this is a one surface plane moving away from, in, from me in space. Here's another surface plane moving away from me in space. And I know that this, sur this plane and this plane are at right angles. So I'm gonna, Line this up. And the vanishing point is uh, looks like it's gonna be farther out there, maybe even off, maybe even off the, uh, uh, the screen in the video. Now, uh, this, is, this would be an incorrect thing to do, the eave on the roof, that, that's, not a, that's not parallel. Um, you want, you want uh, a line that would be parallel with this one. And so uh, the, the better choice would be to use the, um, this line created by the windows. So I'm gonna follow that. Okay, so this, this is a vanishing point here. Then, um, this uh, on the porch here, on the, uh, the, the kind of uh, enclosure in the porch, this is closer to eye level so that the diagonal won't be as strong. Set that up. And that seems to be working with our system. Um, going back here, um, let's try this. So uh, here is the fence on the porch. And then here is, uh, this is a, a right angle plane here. So it's gonna go out this way. Let's see if that matches up with a horizon line. And it does. So anyway, I can, if I'm sketching this out, I can, you know, I can set all this up, you know, I need to have like a wider surface, or you can just, uh, if you don't literally set it up in your sketch, you at least want to kind of visualize what's going on. So imagine these vanishing points out here. Now, right about eye level, I'm looking for kind of a line that's almost level. And that would determine what eye level is. And, and here it is here on the, if I'm using the siding of the cabin. That seems to make sense. Roughly with our, I'll start down here more. I think I got my head in the way again. That's working. And then above eye level, so if you're doing these, uh, if you're doing this siding, for instance, on the cabin, you know they're going. It's going to have the same orientation. So eye level is about right here. Uh, 
And that makes total sense because if you were standing over here, you know, right next to the cabin, your eye level would probably be about there if you're an average sized person. And, and of course the eye level in terms of a photograph is wherever the camera lens was. Uh, and that makes perfect sense. So um, if we do the siding over here, get uh, and line these parallel lines up, it's gonna have the same kind of uh, effect. There's a little distortion going on with the camera lens and so it's not perfect, but I'm gonna make it perfect. Anyway, you see, you you basically you see how that system is working, and uh, and 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 with all these kind of, all this siding, you know that can be really effective if you if you're just conscious of having the proper kind of angle. You know, like all everything's tapering; it gets smaller and smaller as it goes towards the horizon. Anyway, that's probably enough information, um, and then. All of these window panes would conform to that. And then these window panes over here would conform to that, um, that uh, vanishing point. And then, um, then I'm going to draw a line, you know, from vanishing point to vanishing point. And that is the horizon line. I'm just gonna extend it a little bit. So horizon line. And then this is a vanishing point one, vanishing point two, and essentially is two point perspective. This peak, this peak on, you know, this sort of thing is it's not, uh, there's nothing really. It it it's not relevant to this kind of system because it's it's not parallel to the ground. You know, it's at an angle to the ground, so it's not really working. The roof pit, the pitch on the roof here on the spine of the roof, that works. So let's see. Let's line that up. And that pretty much works. So, you know. Um, now these, this and this are parallel, like the back of the roof, the pitch on the back of the roof and the pitch of the, uh, on the front of the roof, those are parallel. And those are, those are subject to another, like that's actually three point perspective, which we don't need to get um, involved with. But anyway, this is something you would just kind of estimate or guesstimate um, in terms of, of setting up a perspective system if you're trying to, um, you know, trying to render it. Anyway, um, so when I do a sketch, then I'm going to be prepared for for this sort of thing, and I might not sketch it out as elaborately as this, but I would be conscious of it in my head so that uh, I can make a more accurate representation. Okay, so now I have a sketch that I worked out just based on this landscape photograph. I cropped it a little bit to uh, make it uh, accommodate this more horizontal format here. And then um, what I did on my sketch, and I know that it's very difficult to see, but I located the vanishing point. Here's the photograph, located the vanishing point on my sketch. And then I made lines based on kind of proportions I was seeing in the photograph. And they're very, they're very pale lines. But I just made sure everything was convergent on that vanishing point. And then I, you know, indicated my horizon line and I used that also <clears throat> for proportion and scale and some of this complicated stuff. Then I did a very, very simple uh, contour line uh, drawing which uh, basically uh, fleshed out some of these shapes, like here's this yellow shape, here's a yellow shape, green shape, green shape, so on. 
um, yellow shape down here, yellow shape down here, you know, really, really basic stuff. There's a tree line like here indicated that. And um, I'm just gonna have to do most of the work with my brush. But this, you know, even if I just did like a, a messy, messy painting, uh, is provided I conform to this system, it's gonna look like perspective, even if there's not a lot of detail in the trees. And, you know, I haven't got all day to make this painting. I just wanna make a painting. Uh, it's not gonna have a lot of detail, but it's gonna at least conform to this notion of perspective. And as long as I get the, light and dark patterns fleshed out, you know, indicate, you know, uh, color groupings and so on. Um, these darks in here and the shadows will be really important. As long as I do all that stuff, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be convincing as a painting. Last thing I did was to uh, work on indicating these patterns of shadows here, horizontally across the road, and they become these kind of cross sections, you know, uh, and that tells that tells me something about the per perspective as well. Um, here, the sun's coming from this direction, so then the shadows are being cast this way. So um, there is a kind of linear shadow going uphill from the base of this tree, and then there uh, is a line of shadow kind of coming down this way and back, and then it connects with some of these shadows, it's very dappled in here, you know, um, but I'm just doing little contour lines around shadows um, so that I can, you know, create that convincing sense of um, landscape and sunlight, but it's gonna be really dramatic with, you know, you know, something almost yellow with the dead leaves on the ground and something almost black. Um, that I think is a real strong feature how how lights and lights and darks are distributed throughout this um, painting. Then the final thing I would do is just erase any strong diagonal lines that I have once I do the drawing that don't indicate borders or contour borders of shapes. So this this diagonal line will be implied just by virtue of me, you know, um, painting in these trees that I that I kind of. Con made conform to this this border. Same here. There's there's not really there's not an edge of anything here on the street. So I'm just going to erase that. I can keep my vanishing point. That's that's like a if there were maybe a stripe, uh, you know, like a stripe on the um, a passing lane kind of stripe, I might keep that, but there isn't. So I'm just going to erase all this business. And I have a sketch that's going to allow me to um, figure out where things are. All right, so now I'm ready to start painting, and that'll be a different um, a different lesson. Okay. <laughs>